I'm not sure when I started painting. I think I probably started painting when I was about five, or maybe before that, because I went to a very good kindergarten, and we were given paints and crayons and all that sort of thing. So I probably had paintbrush in my hand, oh, when I was very little. And so it was very um, easy for me to just begin to be a painter. It never occurred to me that I would ever do anything else but be a painter. It was just what I did. My name is Mary Pratt. I've never figured out who I was. My life is a self-portrait, and my life is what I paint. My life is indicated by what I choose to paint. But I am interested in the things that I do, and the things that I use, and the things that come into my hands. These are the things that interest me, the things that I've made, the meals I've made, the house I've constructed around me. I am a realist painter, there's no doubt about that. I am. And I'm happy to be a realist painter. I worry about beauty in my painting because I think that painting should be beautiful. But often, that's all people see. They don't get beyond that quite frequently. And I'd like to think that there's more to the paintings than that they are beautiful. But if you paint glass, or if you paint anything that is beautiful, an apple, a grape, anything with the light shining through it, is, is simply gorgeous. And I want people to see that. But I hope that with at least most of the work, people see more than that. Sometimes I orchestrate what I want the viewer to see. When I think the painting is too glossy, I sometimes arrange for the viewer to find something that is more. For instance, in glassy apples, I put a chip in the glass of the bowl that the apples are in. And I hoped that the viewers would see that chip and feel that edge on their teeth and feel what it was to bite the apple. I hoped that that might happen. I'm not sure, of course, whether it ever does. You can only hope that people will find something when they look at a, at a work of art. I've worked hard. I've worked hard in order to be able to celebrate what I saw. I couldn't celebrate what I actually saw, unless I worked very, very hard to do it. And that has meant that my spine is twisted, that I can't walk. I'm sure if I had just sat around and read books and listened to music, I'd be able to walk. Starting work at 9 o'clock in the morning and finishing up at 6.30 the next morning, only stopping to eat and maybe have a cup of coffee in between. I never thought of it as a sacrifice. But I didn't go to parties. I didn't have friends. I gave up all of that in order to paint because I thought it was worth it. I thought that I, I, anything that I could give up, I gave up happily in order to have the time to develop my craft. It wasn't easy. I mean, the way I paint is ridiculous. It's very, very hard. And I don't like moaning and groaning about it, but it is. And it is sacrificial, really. It meant I had no network of friends, absolutely none. And uh, certainly, uh, I have very few visitors. I don't see people very much. I'm alone most of the time. I don't mind, but I'd be much happier seeing people because I do love people. 
I, I don't see them often. And um, I guess you would say, if I have sacrificed, that's what I've given up, is a social life and uh, the ability to walk and move. And a great deal of pain, to tell you the truth. So, but without it, there wouldn't have been the paintings. I think life is a very violent affair. Life is no primrose path. Well, I suppose I'll just be shuffled off with people who painted. And if people decide to look at paintings again, you know, maybe they will look at my work. You know, you, you, can't, you can't tell, and you can't hope for that. You really want to satisfy yourself, and, and that's all you can do. As far as other people are concerned, you hope that you reach them. You know, you, but you have to know that if you don't satisfy yourself, you're not going to satisfy anybody else.